nervous around you, sit up. I'm nervous because we have like, normally we have nothing important to say, <laughs> but today we have like a bunch of stuff. What's up guys, welcome to episode 8 of the Coffee Club. As you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, we got a new setup today, so that's pretty exciting. Um, a lot of new stuff to cover today, actually. But firstly, got a very kind message from a lady called Julia on Instagram saying that we should introduce ourselves because apparently for people that don't know us, if they're listening just on like Spotify or Apple, like we all sound the same. So we should probably, uh, <laughs> so we should probably, we should probably, um, oh, that's messed up. Yeah, we should probably, we should probably introduce ourselves. So firstly, I'm Morgan. And then to my left, we got, I'm George. And then I'm Ollie. And that's the usual cast. And today, luckily we have Mr. Joey Moneybags joining us. Hello everyone. <laughs> Is Moneybags your nickname or did I just make that up? It's just bags. It's just Joey, Joey bags. bags yeah. Is it referring to money bags? I don't make money, so no, <laughs> we can't put money bags in there. Where did where the nickname come from then? Uh, it came it, my uh, my freshman year at Santa Clara. My uh, assistant coach gave me that nickname because there's a there's a bit by Mike Berbiglia, who's a stand up comedian, uh -huh. and he talks about this guy who had a brother named Joey Bags. Um, at his work and it's funny and everything, but I'm not going to go through it. So just Sounds look up Mike Birbiglia, Joey Bags. That works. It. Anyway, it's a really cool nickname. But, that is good. Uh, so today we have a bunch of new stuff, as I said. Hopefully you're watching this on our new YouTube channel. But then also we started a new Instagram, which has been popping off lately. Uh, we got a new logo. Thank you very much to Aget for doing that. So if you haven't, follow us on Instagram. We'll be posting a ton of stuff on there, I hope. Um, just getting into our, our uh, housekeeping coffee today i want to say thank you to uh mr andrew one of the on reps from i don't know exactly what area he covers but he sent the beans from cincinnati so and these are deeper roots coffee so thank you very much they're tasting very good um i think he was on route from there wasn't he he must be must like, be right yeah that just that just makes sense so that's our coffee today thank you it's very good uh as you can see, if you're watching this, we have a bunch of mustaches going on and it is November and we will be uh, doing Movember. So we'll have a link in the description and everything for our page, but uh, this is kind of going to be ongoing over the next few episodes. We're going to like do a big like Movember thing, try to raise some money and we will do a contest at some point for everyone to get involved. So if you'd like to be part of that, probably think about start growing out your mo right now because we'll be giving away, I think we're going to give away an OAC scarf. And pins. Maybe some pins. And pins. Yeah, we have like some cool like OAC stuff to give away. And then Joey shaved officially. I shaved just for this episode. What did you look like? Had before? a huge beard. I just had the huge beard. Yeah. In New York. Oh damn. Yeah. Actually, I did see a picture of that. You looked, you looked yeah. really good. I felt so, great. You yeah. Fierce. Yeah. Fierce. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weather. Like all in his Australian athletics picture. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't look quite that <laughs> quite that rug, quite that rugged. I wanted to at least. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we got that going on. And then the other big thing today. We're merged out today with, uh, <laughs> okay, I was going to try to do a serious ad read, but I've already lost it. But today we, uh, we are sponsored by, uh, what's it called? Hearst, Hearst Handbeads Brand. What's yep. their slogan? You'll, You'll like them. Like like <laughs> You'll like them. You'll like them. We've got, yeah, some, we've got some beans here. We've got lentils. These are dried beans for anyone who's listening. Uh, the, the very popular 15, 15 bean soup. Uh, this is the Cajun. We got 15 bean mix. We got lentils. We got black beans. We got pinto beans. We got every bean you can uh, think of. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a joke. Midwest sponsor. finest. I mean, yeah. these, these aren't coffee beans. These are beans beans. These are beans so, beans. Um, it's getting complicated. Get King Supers, you can get them. Yeah, I think I think they're in like gr Kroger's yeah. grocery stores, which obviously are like everywhere across the country. Yeah. Like King Supers or whatever your local one is. But yeah, so actually the story behind that is that our roommate, Zach Snyder, who I don't think he's been on the podcast yet, but his cat was on the podcast last episode, Gimli. He's... That's like his family's company or his dad, his dad works for them. So we got the hook up there, Shout but out Tony. that's our first, that's our first sponsor. I think yeah, our Hopefully. first official episode sponsor yeah. and we're having 15 bean something for we're dinner. We're going to eat them tonight. Yeah, we They're are. pretty good. I mean, we've been, we've had a, a decent bean supply our whole time that we've been living with Zach Snyder, which for some of us has been years now. So yeah. <laughs> it comes in, it, has been years. it yeah. comes in high uh, fiber, much. low fat. Dude, it's a healthy diet, honestly, yeah. just eating those beans. But yeah, we're surprisingly Snyder doesn't eat any. No, Snyder's not eating his own beans. <laughs> not, not the best, not the best, not the best advertising. But uh, yeah, so we're looking to sell out at any opportunity we can. So any other sponsors that want to hit us up, uh, we'll uh, we'll give you a nice shout out for that. But oh, 
I didn't even think about this. Were we going to do a competition for a giveaway? Because we have a bunch of these, like these bean shirts. We should do a contest in the comments. What should what should the contest be though? I think you could probably do something Producer. to do with <laughs> you could do something to do with the beans, right? So if, if they have to do like a funny comment, that, yeah, something about beans. Best, I don't know, best, man. Ca- best comment, a, a bean pun. Just I best bean related comment wins yeah. a shirt. We'll see. Bean related to you. humor. Yeah. yeah. Any yeah. bean related humor, or you can get a ham beans shirt. Yeah, I think that sounds like fun. This. Or a red one. You yeah, we got blue ones and red ones left. So. Uh, Hearst Ham Beans brand. You'll like them. You'll like them. <laughs> Hopefully they got their money's worth there. <laughs> probably, probably not. But, uh, they paid 500k for something yeah. like that. That was, a, that was, yeah, they paid us a lot of money. <laughs> that, was very, that was very valuable. But all right, so that's kind of like the housekeeping stuff done. Moving on to the important stuff. Let me do a deep dive on Joey Bags, money Joey Bar- <laughs> Baratua, man. Um, not money bags. Not, not money bags, bags. Not just the bags. bags. Hold the money, just keep the bags. bags. Hold the money. Joey bags, not money bags. <laughs> Don't make money. So the short Shall of it... Shall we hold the bags? <laughs> Shall we hold the bags? The short of it, uh, you obviously run for a 10-minute lead, which you have for like three years now. Correct, yeah. And uh, you're an 833 steeplechaser. Mm-hmm. Yes. Narrowly missed the Olympic trials. Yeah, by 1.19 seconds. Yeah, and if like... Uh, I'm sure a lot of this audience is into like YouTube content. Like that was like... That was some great ten men stuff. Mm-hmm. That series. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was like when we first watched it. Like you're talking about the like three part series. That yeah, we had after yeah, the, the trials, one that came out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> control your dog. Apologies <laughs> for that loud time. noise. That was Gus. Sorry. But uh, yeah, so your year was actually yeah. I mean, okay, we can just deep dive in it. Like yeah. your you and the rest of ten men like such an up and down year. Oh, it was <laughs> yeah. roller coaster. Year. It was it was horrible. It was so tough. Yeah, like the amount of drama. Like just I mean, like just personally, like from the outside, it was very entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. We, 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 yeah. We, we, like, we were like, this is like. It was always a lot to talk about. <laughs> you, just, you just can't look away. It's like yeah, yeah. It's everything. I mean, this like it's like this happen. is like like it's it obviously sucks to be in the middle right. of it when yeah. you're trying to compete and you're trying to be focused, but it's like. Yeah, man, this like this kind of feels more like a real sport. Finally, like right. there's some actually there's some interest, actually, like, interesting stuff happening. Yeah. Interesting story development. I mean, I can't say I like haven't thought the same when something bad goes for another team, right? Yeah. You know, totally. Like you talk about it, like you're invested in that that drama or yeah, that storylines, yeah. especially yeah. especially Tim and probably. I mean, any big team, it's interesting when something happens. But Tim and is like they're pretty polarizing for like not really like many good reasons. You know, like, what I don't do really, mean? like, I don't really, I'm not offended by that, but what do you mean? <laughs> well, they're like a lot of people like either love Tim and a lot of people love to hate on Tim. Correct. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like, but it's like, if you, if you look at it, it's like, like there's not much of a reason to hate on Tim and actually we hated on Tim in episode two with, uh, Willie. I got a yeah, message. Right, yeah. I got a message from a kid <laughs> saying, said actually today, uh, well, I was actually on the coffee club Instagram account. Go follow us. Uh, <laughs> he was like, hey, could you guys like uh, say something nice about Tim and because you did them pretty bad in episode two. Which, was that just with the Westfly stuff? Did. Yeah, I don't think we did. I mean, no, I, was, I think we were talking about the like Westfly was tri- was created because of like Tim Man and then we're talking about how the drama that Westfly brings yeah, to Tim Man. Right. But like, I, I don't think we're, well, we're my, talking about Okay, my, my criticism was like, you. this is perhaps harsh, but you could say it's honest, is that yeah, I don't know if it still is, but the Instagram bio for Timon was pushing the sport forwards on and off the track. Right, yeah. And I was like, well, I don't think they've pushed the sport forwards on the track yet. Off the track, 100%. Like, yeah. I, I love it. But Absolutely. I'm like, on the track, no, quite. I think that was probably the bad that thing that we yeah. said. <laughs> that was definitely like the OG tagline that the team had back when it was Drew Reed, Sam, and yeah. Tyler, where it was, they were just trying to do their own thing like mm-hmm. they they were trying to like be the ones to push races i mean it's not like an unknown concept like nothing's like really like we're not re- we're not inventing the wheel per se mm-hmm. with that but they were just like trying to push races do something that you know maybe they didn't feel like i mean especially for like drew and drew not drew sorry drew's you know obviously like huge contract out of high school but like sam and reed were you know second team all americans and they were trying to compete with guys that had pro contracts i think that's like the interpretation of like trying to push the sport on mm-hmm. the track and, okay. and that kind of helps off it's a good it's a well. good saying is like it right, is like sure. if you look at a bio and you knew nothing about anything and you just saw that that looks yeah cool, it looks oh it looks cool. great like, it's a good cool. bio but i do, uh, yeah there's no doubt that we have not made a, a huge impact on the world stage you know which like, like you guys pushing are, the sport on the yeah. track right like Jakob's pushing the sport on yeah. the track yeah right? i mean stewie yeah. is pushing yeah. the sport like you guys are pushing the sport on the track well, like, not me but 
Yeah, Ollie. 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 I watch. I watch Ollie, and I'm like, oh, this is good. (laughs) That's the interesting. The interesting thing with it, though, because like, you could still argue. This is just to think about it in a way that you still argue that they are pushing on the track because they are running on the track. That's like you guys are track team. I think you're yeah. overthinking that, Ollie. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just I don't know. Like it's just yeah. Like put, I still think it, you you guys still turn up and you have a presence and you go to a lot of meets. I mean, the, the, particularly in the US, mm-hmm. I pretty much every meet that I raced um, last season, besides Europe. Mm-hmm. Well, in this, America, there's like Tim mm, well, that, I, mean, not in the same I don't know. Race, this last like, year was tough for Tim, yeah, I think, in, for like, sure. on the track because because yeah. obviously, like uh, the top guys were hurt. Yes, yeah. So like that's that's gonna yeah, hurt that any team. Hurt, it hurts. Like that's like that's the main, any That's the main basis of us getting shit on is like you guys aren't any good. But I mean, we still have like three guys that qualified for the world championships in 2019. Yeah, like that's obviously, big. like I mean, they're all 13, 20 guys. Like and at that time, like that's what you needed to do. But yeah. um, there's no doubt that like we you know, we want to be like, we don't think we're the best in the world. We don't think that we're like making the biggest, like, uh, impact when mm-hmm. we race on the track, but we like definitely want to get to yeah, that the point. Goals, like it's, it's the, un- I course think it's the do. underlying story, not necessarily always the result yeah. um, is where that kind of tagline yeah. came from. Yeah. And like, uh, and focusing more on the off the track standpoint, I have so much respect. And I think I've, I've said this to you guys before, like, cause I think about the business side of this sport a lot. And you guys are kind of like the first team. That's like, just like a bunch. It's like, I think every other team probably is like made by brands, you know, mm-hmm. like it's all like, it's very manufactured where you guys are like, all right, we want to create it. Cause the fans want something to support in this sport. They want storylines to follow. And you guys are the first ones that, I feel like I, that really was reinventing the wheel. Yeah. It was. Like, it, it really that. was. That. No one else doing that. And there's other people who've maybe tried to do it, but yeah. you guys obviously took it to a whole new level, uh, selling the merch, making the YouTube videos, making the Instagram, like really creating like, yeah, storylines, yeah. which is what people want. Tell, tell Joey about the... Uh... Yeah, I could you tell them about the OSC, the sticker thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I heard about it. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. How did you I heard hear about, about that? it. That was nice. How did you hear about that? I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't. Was that, I, was honestly, it was source. one of my teammates, and I couldn't tell, tell you who's. Who's so inside I, source. But for anyone, someone was in the room. For we, anyone who wants to it know. Maybe it was Cam. Maybe yeah. It could have been Cam, because yeah. I might have mentioned it to him. For yeah. anyone who wants to know, we had an OAC. We talked about it. It was like a on event here in Boulder, and they wanted us to bring, I think it was like three products or whatever, to the meeting to show like what we think like on could do like kind of mm-hmm. like innov- well, we'll innovation but yeah. yeah like something cool that you see from another company that on isn't doing yet and one of the things that i brought was the tinman sticker because i think the logo is so cool and i think the sticker is really stick, cool yeah, like, it's a cool sticker and the like, sticker that we have like that it's on the back of my car like it's really hard to put on the oac off, one sure. yeah i think the tinman brand the tinman from a branding cool. st- standpoint it's just like it's so clearly tinman it's just like uh, it, it's, it looks really cool. So what you guys have done there is absolutely amazing. The fact that you guys are able to have a, I mean, pretty like pretty much self-supported team. Mm-hmm. I don't know like exactly the all the financials and stuff, but uh, you guys are obviously doing amazing. Hopefully, it can continue to grow. But how did you end up on the team? Yeah, I just moved here. Like, <laughs> uh, I yeah, I graduated college and I emailed a bunch of teams. Some of them a bit ambitiously. Um, just saying, hey, this is who I am. Like I was, my best time was 8:52 in the steeplechase. So I made regionals and out of Santa cash. Clara. Out of Santa Clara, yeah. yeah. So um, that was my best time, and I was like, you know what? Maybe this can get me somewhere. In, in my mind, I was like, this is enough for me to go try and run professionally or go try and run post collegiately. And um, I actually DM Sam saying, hey, I'm not any good, but I really want to be good, and I think I can be good if you just give me a chance. And he said, reach out to Coach Schwartz and just. You know, you got to be coached by him. You got to live in Boulder uh, to to be on the team. So that's what I did. I picked up Coach Schwartz as my coach, and I moved out here. And I just messaged them saying, "Hey, I'm here. <laughs> if you want, if you want, I'd love to you know go on an easy run with you guys and just uh, just hang out." And they were they're incredibly welcoming in that respect. And from there, it just turned into like me just being good friends with them and running with them and just running workouts because it was it was still very grassroots at that point. I was like. I think I was like really like the the sixth guy to be out there behind That's crazy. The OG four and, and Connor and Connor was already out here because he went to see you, so see yeah. Eventually, you. I wow. I kind of proved my worth and made USA indoors and outdoors, and they're like, all right, like you can officially be on the team. And I was already getting you know Adidas stuff and the gear and everything, so um, it didn't really change. Which I was once I was officially on the team, 
but yeah, I just kind of like just wiggled my way in there per se. That's and how just, you gotta do it sometimes. Just drank some beers at Elk Run with them and showed them. See, a that's, good the, time. that's the way <laughs> to do it. Like if if kids that like that love Tim Man and that love yeah. the idea of Tim Man, that's the idea that they would have in their head if they wanted to join your team. Would yeah. be like to message Sam or message Drew and say, "Hey, like I want to join your team." Right. And then go just like move to Boulder, just commit. Show up. Yeah, just to show. Do you up. do you think that would still work though? Yeah. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work, work anymore. anymore. So yeah. it's timing. Much more it's a timing thing. Like it, no, I, and... yeah. If I was an eight fifty two guy right now and I tried to reach out, I wouldn't get any response. Yeah. So just great timing, huh? Yeah. I mean, I on their website they were, they said they were looking for guys that were going to be a good fit for the team, not necessarily the the NCAA champs. And I was like, yeah, that's the only excuse I need to move out to Boulder. <laughs> like it was, it was my dream to move out here. Um, ever since like I watched, uh, the Colorado flow track. Oh, series. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was obsessed with, did Pierce you read and, running with the buffs? Uh, not until I moved out here. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good one, but yeah, that's like, yeah, that you took a big risk there. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought worst case, I'd just be out in Boulder doing the same training as them. So not that's, that bad. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good enough approach rather than being in San Francisco and um, you know, I'd be working full time yeah. and that just didn't seem like the route I wanted to take. Damn. And you, Sweet. yeah. So you, you also coach right now with the hammer and axe. Correct. Are yeah. you taking on new athletes right now? Uh, yeah, I'm willing to take on new athletes. I have four right now that yeah. I coach. One of them's a bit more of like a mentorship, which is kind of cool. So I just talk to him once a week mm -hmm. and just kind of hash out any emotions or feelings or, um, just anything that he wants to talk about leading up into races. So that's cool. Um, that's fun. And then the rest of the guys I coach and they're mainly just like either high schoolers or recently graduated high yeah. schoolers. So just trying to walk onto a team. So it's, it's fun to like, you know, go with them in that process when they're invested in it. Right. Yeah, that is cool. So anyone who's listening, that's looking for an online coach. Yeah. Reach out to Hammer Joy Bag, man. Yeah. That'd be love sweet. To, love to pick up some kids. Yeah. But like focusing. That didn't sound right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, got, I got candy. Oh, yeah. 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 Like Freudian slip. I did love that I was dead quiet when that was like, like, just, just took a second quiet. to process. This like, mic on. is broken. <laughs> hang on. Did you actually just say that? Yeah, he said that. <laughs> kind of like when kind of like a few weeks ago when ollie yeah ollie didn't oh. realize but he's like what did he say george i said uh, no mick was uh, mick was, groomy. Yeah. he's really good at grooming us yeah <laughs> we're like, like races and stuff we're like you know that has like heavy sexual connotations but yeah so <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> just just slips out sometimes just say it every now and then but focusing in more in uh this past year in in the tinman tinman universe <laughs> uh i don't even know where to start i guess you I, uh, yeah <laughs> well, I, th I think Join one of the please. biggest things i just like saw from i saw like a, a one second clip of someone asking drew what was the like what what made the well, what was the turning point of last yeah. year and he said yeah. getting coached by my mom yeah, yeah. Cool. Sounds about right. <laughs> the coaching yeah. change yeah yeah that was huge I can say uh, I can say my experience from it, and maybe we can we can riff from there. But we uh, we were you at Drake? Drake what? Relays? Oh no, I wasn't. So oh, I that was, was like yeah. Low so so low that was low. low. So I was yeah. there for that, yeah. right? So that was Drake Relays. Oh, uh, you won that race too. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah, shout out Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> won Morgan, the, Morgan came away with the dog. Everyone didn't win because it was his birthday though. It wasn't my birthday. Yeah. Oh, it was your birthday. That makes sense. Nice little paycheck Some on the birthday. Some natural EPL going through your veins. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch the veins. But uh, so that was literally, I think, like the the weekend or the week where I think the news. That's where they, things. That's where the news broke. Did it break yeah. on Let's Run? Yeah, I'm assuming it did. Let's Run. Yeah. And so pretty much what had happened was you guys had had. I mean, I don't really know how it happened, I guess. How, so you guys had previously fallen out with. You guys had decided you didn't want to be coached by Tommy. Correct. Moore. Yeah. How did that go down? Were you guys like, was it collectively? Everyone's just like, hey, do you guys like, I think Tom's a pretty bad coach. Do you think that as well? You know, the, w the way it worked out and I won't get into every single detail, I guess. Yeah. Um, but the way it worked out was I I learned, it was it was Drew that had left Tom or left Coach Schwartz first. I think it's, he doesn't like being called Tom. He likes being called Coach Schwartz. So I'll <laughs> give him that respect. Um, he had left Coach Schwartz first. And I learned that at the Texas Trials and Miles race, like right after... Okay. My race, I learned on my cool down that Drew had left Coach Schwartz. And from there, it was like, what's everybody else going to do? Pro probably follow <laughs> suit, right? Yeah, it's um, effect. I think I think a lot of people were not particularly happy with how things have had been working. They weren't happy with their training. Nobody was really racing well. You know, at, at that race at Charles Miles, I ran 347 for 1500. Like that, yeah. I just, I mean, granted, my PR was 
344. So, I mean, a little bit off, but I just, I wasn't there mentally. I wasn't there physically. Everything just had been off. And so from the outside, it kind of looked like he, so he has this, if you're a, if you're a pro group, you need a lot of attention. Like as a, that's the issue with the pro group. Like it's hard to you for what you get out of it. You need to really be invested. Mm -hmm. Whereas the thing with coach Schwartz is he has this massive online coaching mm -hmm. business. So yeah. he had a lot going on. He, he definitely did have a lot going on. He had his dissertation that he was working on. Yeah, was there was, it. there was just a lot of things yeah. where it just didn't, we didn't feel like we were getting the fullest of attention. And even with the training, we didn't feel like we were getting his training that we knew was very good training. Like we knew what it was like when he was coaching us very well. Like we knew how we raced when he was a hundred percent on with us. And, uh, it, it just, it was too long of not having that be the case. And we had, reminded him multiple times saying, Hey, you need to do this. Like we need this out of you. Um, there was a contract at, you know, that came along next and still that contract was not being honored on his part. And we just felt at that point there was, it was too many warnings, you know, of we we've, we've, we've let you know one too many times that you're not doing your job. And what happens when you get called into your boss's office three times saying you're not doing your job. You probably get let go at some point, right? So yep. the team made a decision at that point to uh, a couple weeks later that we should pursue a new coach and that, you know, in the interim, since Drew was being coached by his mom, that we would take on Coach Hunter as our coach until maybe we found a different coach. And then it just came to a point where we were thinking this is a, a great situation that we're in. I think we should keep Coach Hunter. As so that coach. was that was like the switch was straight from Coach Schwartz to... Yeah, she came on pretty much right away. But that wasn't your... Your intention was to still look for another coach. You weren't like you were... You guys were kind of figuring out still. Mm -hmm. I think... you want to stay with her? Or... I think we were definitely willing to have that conversation of is there anybody else that we could... Um, we had like we sat down for a couple hours and talked about this and the conversation is is there anybody else on the top of our minds that we could think would be a great coach for us and and nothing came up at the time and I think we allowed ourselves ourselves a little bit more time after that to think about it think it through but I think as the training went on with coach Hunter more and more and everybody got more comfortable that's when we kind of and I think you know to no fault of Drew he was in the best place mentally and physically getting through his injuries and I think everybody else was yeah you know, getting that TLC that they needed through their injuries because everybody was just broken, right? Yeah, well, um, that, was, that was actually what I was going to just say is like, how was that transition with, with Coach Hunter? Uh, it was great. I mean, she just showed that she cared um, whether Coach Schwartz actually cared or not. Like, we didn't really know at the time. Uh, That's especially during terrible injuries. spot to be in. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's not, it, and I think one of the worst things about being a pro athlete in, in track and field is that, and I've heard this across other teams too, when you're hurt, the coach just forgets about you and it you're on your happen. own, right? Like that's not unfamiliar to other programs where you're in the pool by yourself and you're just doing your own training. And I had experienced that personally for four months where I was just selling my soul doing swim workouts and I've, I'm not a swimmer, you know, maybe I should hit up Ollie for that. Um, <laughs> I was, I was just, I'm not a, I'm not a good swimmer either. So yeah. I was just trying to like do my best to swim in the pool, you know, and that with zero direction. Whatsoever. Yeah. Cause then you're questioning like, well, is what I'm doing like even worth it? But then, which is normal. Like I think all individuals will question that, but then normally you want someone who you can put a hundred percent trust in For to sure. tell you, and yeah. that's your coach, you know? Correct. And that's something that coach Hunter has been able to give us. I mean, we have, I mean, Aaron's been hurt since late 2019, early 2020. Um, Sam has had some tough injuries. Drew is obviously coming back from injury and she just every single day, like this is what we are going to do. And this is how I think we should do it. And I think just that alone puts you like in such a better, like, space a mental space where it's like okay like i'm actually working towards something even if that's just like running on land again because when you're training in a pool or you're on the elliptico for four months you're like what the hell am i doing here yeah, like yeah, am, I, am i working towards anything especially yeah. if it's just on your own like yeah. so just to have that direction a little bit of tlc like was it's just huge and i think any athlete can you know appreciate well, she, that the um hunter family's moved out here right uh, okay, out here. Uh, Coach Hunter is Jones out here. Uh, they are in the process of selling their house to where yeah. um, Drew's dad can get out here, and then they have um, one more kid in high school that's okay. gonna. They have like, come out they here. have. I think Drew is one of eleven. Nine. One of nine. That's yeah, they have that's nine a lot kids. of kids, and like that commitment, even for Coach Hunter to like come out, mm -hmm. and like that's a commitment to the team as well mm -hmm. as to Drew, and like that's one thing that I think when uh we were signing that Dathan was doing the same thing he was moving right. his family from michigan to like boulder like it was that commitment 
and that you know you yeah you know that they're invested so right yeah i mean that coach, seems like yeah. the same Coach Schwartz did the same thing. Like he moved his whole family out. Yeah, here. like that was a, like a that, big that's point a, of that's contention. An indication of like yeah. being invested. Like so that's good to see yeah. that. When we asked, when when we had asked, you know, the potential idea of him doing it, and then he eventually did it. Like that was like okay, like he's invested in us. Like he yeah. really wants, to, he really wants to see this sign, through, yeah. which was great. So it's, you know, it's, it's awesome to see that that is in the process. Mm -hmm. and then, right. Um, I mean, I'm, I can imagine also for Drew, it's great to have his family close by. I just yeah, it really is somebody that he and I mean. Coach Hunter to us is like almost like a mom, yeah, right? Yeah. It, like as much as like people joke about it online, like Tin Mom. Yeah, Tin Mom. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a, great, a pretty good name. Great, yeah. I, I like Tin Mom. I you guys yeah. just make, make the change, man. I, yeah, <laughs> make the change, Tin Mom. Right, she just checks up on you. I have never felt any hesitation to speak my mind to her about anything. Like I got some one-on-one -on -one training when I was training for Sir Walter and um, that Guardian Mile in Cleveland, where nobody else was really racing, and I was able to just like you know, if I needed to hash something out, like I could say something without being reprimanded for it or being, mm -hmm. you know, talked down to because of it. And that was just the good part. Like I just, I, you know, my coach at Santa Clara was one of my best friends and I could go to him about anything. And I think I just really needed that. So from my perspective, selfishly, I, I thought that coach Hunter was a great ad um, to bring on our team. Cause he just gave a shit from the outside. She gave yeah. a shit. <laughs> from the outside, it seemed like Corey was coaching you guys for a bit. Yeah. Was he just like overseeing the transition? Jones coaching while she was still in you know, Virginia? I think, uh, I mean, yeah, I I think mean, he was just the boots on the ground while she was trying to figure yeah. out how the hell she was going to get out right. here. Um, so, yeah, he really was the boots on the ground, the one um, telling us what we needed to do, how to do it, just helping us mentally um, get through workouts, get through training, get through the bullshit that was, yeah, that was going happening on. online, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, he was super, I mean, for me, he was like, he was my right hand man of like, this guy's going to get me through the season that somehow. Yeah. So I loved, I loved Corey. Yeah. Well, good Frank for him God. now. Now yeah. he's been able to move on to like right. the full, like pro yeah. coaching job. So, yeah. so that worked out we were sweet, stoked for him. really yeah. well for him as well. But yeah, that's kind of the thing where it was really difficult. I think for you guys was the fact that I think every single person on the team probably already felt a ton of individual pressure being in Olympic year, trying to qualify for either the Olympics or the Olympic trials, whatever like your your goals were. So you guys wanted to try to keep it private, which I don't know yeah. if you get, if you guys look back on it now, maybe like that, you guys like, well, oh, that was probably never gonna work out. But the, the way it came out, which was, yeah, it was obviously like leaked or whatever. Yeah. So then it just like blew up in your faces. Right. Yeah. And then like the internet always kind of likes to pick sides with stuff. And like, I think people just love like making memes out of for Tim sure. and stuff. Yeah. So it was just like- I've seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> it was for a bit there. Yeah. It, was, uh, it, it was, was a little brutal. I think- It's not the way you wanted to play out, obviously. I, I, I was able to laugh about it at first because I was just so confident in the decision that we had made. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it was like, these guys are like the scum of the earth. They're shitty people. Like they're just a bunch of frat guys. Like you hear that a bunch and like it, it like, you know, it starts like, oh, okay, yeah. like this is get this is getting old. The problem like, is when it doesn't go away. And they right. don't yeah. just go yeah. away. It just yeah. wasn't and going like, away. You know, right. you guys were doing with not just that, but like injuries and yeah. like just this is it's overwhelming. And it, not yeah. and no one can deal with it mentally. Or like what you got like that whole thing was just massive. Well it people were everywhere. having maybe just a little bit too much fun. Too much fun. Right. Yeah. Where they were like I, I can't even remember, but there were like Instagram pages or like pictures of like people with like Tim and stuff and then like crossed out or like mm -hmm. Tom Sport. I can't even remember exactly anymore. It was a while ago. Yeah. Our sport is normally pretty boring. Yeah. So it's it was like, you love the idea though that like people bought a Tim Man shirt and then crossed it out. They still yeah. bought your shirt and they crossed it like yeah. Yeah. It was, People took it pretty far. And it was, again, it was funny, but I can uh, see how, like for you guys, that obviously. Yeah. really so I mean, sometimes it's the same kids that are dming you like saying like hey like i'm really inspired like how do i get better at the sport or the Dude, just high schoolers man later. high school I mean, is like I, I love the support um but i do recognize that sometimes kids and high schoolers don't always mean what they say so like, there's wavering from there there's been multiple times where like you know a kid that you know like shits on you whether it's through a comment or a dm and you're like dude like what's going on and they're like oh i just thought it was funny like i just thought it was funny <laughs> that's like, as far as they I mean, think you, about you, it yeah. you kind of have to like really like not take all that stuff personally a yeah. lot you know well so so you in particular have had a lot of experience with that now because <laughs> oh, yeah. we we touched on this a little bit uh what's his name what's the west fly guy 
uh, Everett. Schmitz, Everett yeah. decided to like pick you as like yeah. his main target. I was the bait. I was <laughs> I was the baby Lion calf the... that the lion wanted to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Not referring to him as a lion by any means. But yeah, he doesn't deserve that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like that's was say, like, like what, that's the weak one. That's what, the slow one. Like, what made him pick you? Do you know? I think I was just the slowest guy. Oh. Like it's easy to call out the slowest guy on the team. What was his know? nickname for you? Uh, Joey Cheese, which was clever. <laughs> which is clever. Wait, what does that wait, mean? Because because and and. I've had my last name botched for years now, like ever since I was a kid. And so um, he didn't know how to pronounce, from what I understand, he doesn't know how to pronounce my last name. So he started calling me Joey Burrata. Oh, and like Burrata the cheese, is a, yeah. a type of fine cheese, which is actually yeah. delicious. Yeah, like, like mozzarella. I, I just had it recently. It's really good. And so he just eventually just turned Tastes into amazing. Joey Cheese. So it's like there's multiple That's layers. actually quite a few layers That's to that. Hilarious. I love multi layered jokes. And I was, <laughs> at first, I was like, <laughs> It's, it was just annoying when I go to meets and some kid would yell Joey Cheese at me. I was like, yeah. you, you West Fly, <laughs> right? Like, but now it's just something that you can laugh at. So. Well, that's I, I ran with you one time during it, and I, yeah, we talked about it. You were taking it pretty well. I didn't take it well at first, and oh, really? I, I was just quiet about it. You know, like I'm not one for confrontation. Like I, I mean, being at Santa Clara, you can fly under the radar, right? Like we weren't very good. Um, you know, we weren't making nationals. I was, you know, racing at regionals. You can just try your best and fly under the radar and nobody's going to give you shit for it, right? Because you're not in the spotlight. You know, you yeah, have vulnerable yeah. as much. So to be in the spotlight and just to f experience for the first time that kind of um, dissent or hate or, you know, ball busting was just like, ah, oh, like, I'm not sure how to respond to this. Like, do I laugh about it? Do I get pissed off about it? Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I definitely got it from, like, people playing, like, played baseball growing up and people love talking shit, you yeah. know, so, but... I wasn't really ready to like bark back because I was like, I was, <laughs> Gus. Sorry, I just stole Gus's treat, um, his toy from him. I mean, when you're good at something, it's easy to bark back, right? Like, yeah. Regardless of like how mature people think it is. So it was easy to do when I felt like I was, you know, performing well playing baseball growing up, but I feel like I didn't really prove my worth per se in the running world. So it's like, why am I, why should I bark back about this? Right. So it's a tough one. Cause it's like. Well, yeah, everything that he does is all, like, it's very, like, ego. It's very, like, and the thing with him, which, like, helped him a lot is he was actually running. Amazing. He was running, he was running great, yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's, like, no it's, like, at the end of the day, it's just stupid running. And then you can just take so many perspectives on it, which we have. It's because it's, like, obviously, you don't want that to happen. And, that, like, he's straight up just being, like, an asshole and a bully or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then also, it's, like, wow, sport has some more excitement again, you right. know? Yeah, for sure. So yeah. I mean, like, we're getting entertainment mm -hmm. off the track. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in any sport, you're going to have, like, those controversial figures that are going to um talk still, shit yeah, like try yeah. try dude and, we've like, given this guy so much more credit than he deserves <laughs> <laughs> he comes up in two. why do we keep talking about him <laughs> yeah. well, because, i mean it's just like <laughs> i mean the guest i mean we have all eat you know it's yeah. easy to talk about yeah. it right because he was there he was in the middle of it, it makes but sense. Yeah, this think, is the last time yeah i, just, this, I mean we don't really like, unless he does something like amazing yeah yeah based well, on past stuff we're gonna bring it up again though like because i think it makes sense while we bring it up to yeah to joey and then maybe if he comes here we can get him on the podcast he'll definitely be on the pod at one point yeah i imagine I mean, I don't doubt that at any point, if you're your most confident self, you're going to run well, right? But yeah, the second yeah. you get hit in the chin is like, how are you going to respond to that? So we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Cause yeah. I, I feel like, you know, as time goes on, like it's fizzled out a bit and, um, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, whether you think it's like the best platform for gaining followers and traction or not, like is only time will tell. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And we also say this every time, but again, it's another credit to Timman cause it only exists because of Timman. He's, right. he's only able to get his platform because Timman already has their massive Correct. platform. So yeah. another, that's kind of a compliment. And yeah. So that is what it is, but kind of getting more back into like your 2021 campaign, more actual running mm -hmm. stuff. How was that for you? Because you, you, <laughs> you had some, yeah, even thinking about that, man, like, well, was it that race in Kansas? Was it in Kansas where the thing you guys started at the wrong line? The what? The yeah, race. Yeah, oh, it that was, was, the, was in Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a weird way to start the season. Um, <laughs> that didn't help that yeah. I mean, the dude, first race yeah. gone. I was in the best shape of my life. Like, we, I mean, we were doing double workouts in the spring. Yeah. Or, sorry, in the, like, late winter in Phoenix. Like, mm -hmm. I was selling my soul for, like, six weeks straight. And I was like... I'm exhausted as hell, but this has got to work, right? This yeah, is, I must like, be so fit like, right now. I was, I mean, like my PR in college was in the mile was 408 and I closed the workout in 410, like my yeah. last mile. Like I was like, I'm like, this is the best I've ever been. I'm ready to go. And um, I think I was just so exhausted that it was just tough to get through that season. Just like feeling truly confident, truly ready. Like that's what, I mean, this the late winter, early spring is when I started talking to a sports psych of just like, Cause after the, the, 
the race in Phoenix at 3K, I was just like, I was devastated. I was like, how mm -hmm. could that happen when I've had so much to back up how good of a runner I am right now, you know? And just like, I was like, I got to get on top of this before I start really getting, you know, fucked up mentally. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then, you know, we got to take a little bit of a break after that Texas race before Kentucky. And I thought it doesn't matter. That's kind matter. of the start of outdoors, yeah, pretty right, much. Like yeah. real outdoors. And as a steeplechaser, it's easy to ride off any race that's not a steeple, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm a steeplechaser. Like, this is like, you know, helping me and my craft going towards a steeplechase. And yeah, to like run a PR, like, I mean, my PR going in the season was 844, which I mean, is not competitive, obviously. And um, I had PR'd per se, like we were 839, Brian ran 825. Um, and we we had a good idea that that line was off. He like, did. In the pre-race the day before, we were looking at it and it looked way too close to the 200 meter mark where I was like, that looks like really. Was it like a recently like re- It was recently redone. Redone re track. Brand new track. Yeah. This was like the first meet they had on the new track. So. <clears throat> Which for, like people that don't know, steeplechase is so weird because like, like every track can kind of be different. It's different. different. Yeah. Like just depending on how starts. wide the turns are. And the yeah. turns were narrow. So it's like, it should have started a yeah, little further back. Okay. Like the pit wasn't the pit wasn't super like cut in. It was like somewhat close to the outside yeah. of the turn. So we're like, this is like interesting, but we, this isn't our job to question this. Like no. we just got to go out there and race and compete. So. Yeah. And so you guys had these like seemingly amazing performances. I mean, they were still great performances and this is like, this stuff is captured really well in the YouTube series mm -hmm. that you guys made, like a lot of elation after the race. And I should, the Olympic trials time was at 8.32. Correct. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone has that like in the back of their minds. Um, they, P, like PB for you to start the season, right. like a season eight thirty nine, seven seconds off, great. Like, and then and dead spikes, like there were yeah. Drew spikes from twenty seventeen. I just liked them because they were white. Like, yeah, I love racing in white shoes. Your white so. shoes is pretty yeah. cool, isn't it? Pretty clean, right? <laughs> pretty cool. But and then how long later was it when you guys found out that it was like the, it was like two days after? Like and it was pretty quick. Know straight away. And, you, well, and you were like, what surprised? No, not really. It was one of the college coaches that like saw he saw his kid run like eight fifty, and he was like, no, <laughs> there's no <laughs> way he ran eight fifty. Like no, check it. And then I checked it and it was like 60 meters short oh, <laughs> like 10 man. seconds so i, I ran i ran 850 oh, <laughs> technically uh, that's that's that was a bit defeating it wasn't that's my a, best race that's like kicking the balls yeah it wasn't my best race like i knew that like i fell off pace a little bit and i like didn't close well but that's what happens in the first deeply like you forget how hard it is like you forget that kind any, of hard. i think any track race you forget how hard it is for sure if you haven't done it a bit yeah. like, it's like race fitness you gotta learn like yeah. race again sometimes yeah, how yeah. much you can hurt and stuff yeah so for me personally like i got a, i knew i had to race a lot of steeples i raced like six or seven steeples in this in the spring and the summer so yeah yeah that kind of hurt and it was just more fuel to the like shit on tin man fire right yeah. like like it, wasn't, it was not good timing. Cause, cause, it was not good timing, and also like the funny thing, like it, just, it wasn't your fault. Like right, you guys didn't. Yeah. It wasn't like you guys like did it. Like, like, like just oh, this, this, this is, yeah. we, we'll get away with this. It's right. Like, that's just what happened. Yeah. And then it's like, oh great, we have to deal with this now. Well, it's just like everyone it's, knew about it. It's relieving to like make a big decision and have that like be reassured that you made a good decision. Yeah, validated, right? And yeah. like that was the validation. Like, okay, Brian just ran the trial standard. Jermaine was only a second off his PR. And I PR'd by five seconds. Like, okay, great. Like what we're this doing is working. is working. Like what everything else that's going on, like that that doesn't have to affect us, right? Like we can get through this space mentally and it just, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and you just found it on the news and then it's just like a deflated balloon. Yeah, and it's just like, it all right, we just, I mean, like we all knew it was like, this is the first effort. Like we weren't expecting much. We knew we were going to go out hard, but like at the end of the day, like this isn't going to be the defining race of the season. Like we knew that, June was the time to race hard. Like that was the time where it's really going to come together. So from our, our, the three of us, from our standpoint, it was like, okay, that was a good first effort. Like obviously it didn't work out time-wise the way we wanted, but we're ready to move on to the next one. Yeah. What was bouncing back from that? Like it was fine. I mean, we just went to Kansas, um, after that Kansas city for that trials and miles race. And it was just super windy. Yeah. And at that point, um, do those trials and miles races, I, I don't think we'll maybe one of them was in like a good spot to race. Maybe yeah, like, they like, had it in such bad cities. It's just like when you don't race, I mean like, I don't know, maybe I'm just saying this because I'm from California, but when you don't race in California, yeah, it's like, what's the point? Like you just <laughs> yeah. need, you kind of need stars to align, right? You need good weather. I mean like, you know, that when Ole Miss ran that, like that meet in Oxford and they all ran super well, they, <laughs> their meet got delayed by a day, right? Because yeah. it was thunderstorms and like, yeah. they pushed it back and had a good weather day, but it's tough to like really get, those kind of like yeah i mean conditions. in those places like especially anywhere midwest or south like mm -hmm. it's probably gonna be shitty it's weather a toss -up. <laughs> it's a toss-up for yeah. sure yeah. yeah it's not you're not gonna be able to rely on it at all yeah so, so yeah it took a while to like 
I mean, mentally it was easy to bounce back, but like to get that like final reassurance when I ended up like actually running 8.33, that was like, okay, like what we're doing is working. Like obviously I'd missed the trials time, but- Was that um, Portland? This was in, uh, this was at Lee University. Like we went to like, you know, Christian Noble? Yeah, DT yeah. Runner. He in was, Tennessee? He was going for the trial standard and okay. somehow they got in contact with Corey. He was like, if you want to bring your guys out here, because I think he had reached out to a bunch of people like, if you want to get your guys out here, like we have a brand new track, <laughs> like great. Like, yeah. How short oh, is this Oh, this has worked one? out yeah. pretty well in the past for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the weather's been great. Like if you want to come out here and race well, like, you know, yeah. obviously like you guys can work with Christian and get together in your goals. And that's what we did. And I ran 833 and just missed the mark, but it was an 11 second PR, you know, like that's, that's amazing. That's a little bit of a breakthrough, right? That I knew was going to come at some point. And I wasn't upset about that in the no. slightest, even like looking back, like, missing the trials like who who cares like obviously like that's like it was a dream of mine ever since i transitioned to running i was like i want to make the trials and i want to break four in the mile like those are the two big goals and to uh to just miss it was like disappointing but to know that like i like truly never like knew if i was ever going to like even be in that position to make it in the first place was like damn you're right there like this is cool like you should be happy for yourself yeah. your parents to love you your friends to love yeah. you yeah, there you, go. <laughs> you keep, you keep was... saying that man like i don't know if they like i think how, they, how do you I, know you're, how do you know quite a bit. how do you I know just, that my they do? mom called me today she said oh. and she said i love you and i said i love okay. you too mom that's good, so, that's yeah, good too, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're good um, what was what was the race i remember watching a clip i wasn't at the meet but you you i don't know you felt you felt Oh that yeah, that was Portland. at Portland. That, that was, was at Portland. That was I remember race. watching that fall because you looked, like, you looked like you were like moving away. Oh yeah, and then you you just hit the ground oh, hard. I, I, it. I watched, I watched that's like the, three times. That's the like, I, I can't chase stop for watching you. this. Yeah. just like, oh, because like, I mean, we're no strangers to falls, so, you know, in bad races. Right. I Leo, fallen. but um, oh, Leo, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like oh, it's man. just like a steeple. Like I can just imagine, like that goes through the back of your head, like just like because I know. And I've spoken to Leo about steeple in particular. Like, I mean, there's a barrier in front of you. Like, I don't yeah. know how you, like, I don't, I've never done a steeple before. It's just, it seems very uh, daunting. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the event. And anytime there's a fall, it just, you kind of have to swallow that pill because it's yeah. bound to happen at some point. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately for me, it was just on the best day of my life. I was, I was feeling myself like Brian. You look good. Like, Brian, I, was, yeah. I was watching it. I was like, oh, is that when Brian did get Brian? Yeah. No, Brian got it at the meet before at Poland oh, Track yeah, Fest. This was Stumptown. This you was like that the last, days later. This was the last last ditch effort like four days later i was feeling like absolute garbage the first three laps and then brian stepped off and i went over the water pit i was like damn i feel good yeah, like i day. i'm going to ruin some people in this race you know like and i there were guys that were in that race that are be like just objectively on paper better than me and you get that like a little bit of swagger and confidence and it was just like i'm unstoppable right now and yeah. that's just when you're flying too close to the sun yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. man the hurdle i felt i felt like jagger going over those hurdles like i was like maybe this <laughs> I, I, I watched the clip a lot, like good looking back at it and more like, you know, fewer and far between now, but the hurdle before I must've cleared it by that much. Like my Jeez. knee went over by that much. I was really? like, I was like, fuck, that was a good hurdle. <laughs> like you want, like, you don't want to be that close, but like the more efficient you can be, good, yeah. the better. And I just drill, I like, it was just a half step too late and I, my knee just drilled it. And there was just like no stabilizing after that. I've clipped the barriers before and like, that's a bit terrifying. But like I straight up just like just dead leg myself yeah. with that barrier and I just fell over. Yeah. And yeah, I was just like, and next thing you know, like I was like, I was like, all right, next one, like we're pushing the pace. Like I like can really attack a hurdle well. And that's where I was going to start to separate. I was like, all right, attack, attack, like three hard steps in and I'm going over and I was like, all right, three steps out. And then all of a sudden like blacked out for a second and then I'm on the ground and yeah. I'm like, fucking hell. Like, yeah. just, like, get up, get up, get up. Like you got to go. Like you got to. And that would have, that probably just drained all your energy. It did, yeah. And like, it didn't help that like I straight up thought my like knee was broken. Yeah, like, that would have. It, 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 it was just like so hard to like get back in that rhythm of yeah. just like next thing you know like just waves of self doubt. Like my knee hurts. Fuck, this is really hard now. Like you just like you got I snapped out of it. So that was tough. But those those are lessons you learn, right? Like that's I don't believe in like a, a fate per se, but like shit happens. And you just got to be able to how, like navigate it. And just as long as you feel like you've done your best job, like things work out the way they should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. How you respond to that stuff yeah. is going to be uh, what defines you. So clearly you, uh, I mean, yeah, that's tough though. But. We'll, see, we'll <laughs> see this spring. You know, I, I'm, I'm very confident in my hurdling abilities now. I'm very confident in my fitness yeah. or like my capability to gain fitness. You know, I don't think I'm necessarily like 
super fit right now per se because it's november but yeah i'm just excited to see where it goes yeah right? you feel like you're in the when, right track when did you first race what's, what's, what's like for the outdoor season well yeah just moving forward well, like you raced like last week i raced i raced recently what's your i i have no, I'm, thinking, I'm actually yeah i'm, I'm thinking more like, i have try. no idea what the outdoor season you guys doing like. indoors we'll do indoors for yeah, sure okay. um i think we're gonna try i mean we've loosely talked about it um i think we'll try and hit up like a bu meet yeah maybe yeah. try and get some kind of like team 5k or 3k in nice and essentially just brian drew and i have been like really clicking together well and i think we're just gonna um i know brian and i for sure drew sometimes is like Kind of has to wait a little bit longer to kind of figure some of that stuff out just based on kind of what he wants to do yeah but we're just going to go in for indoor 3k at usa's and um i know brian's talking about like i want to make a world team and for me it's just like i just want to keep being competitive and just yeah. seeing what i can do right yeah. yeah i feel like i should know this i feel kind of stupid asking this but what is your current mile pb four flat point Cause, seven because yeah. because i i remember Particularly, not I don't think as much this year, but mm -hmm. in the last year or two, that was a big storyline as well. Like for the ten men, for sure. I think yeah. that was like the title of a video. Or something Which like. yeah, it was, and that's. <laughs> I, no, I'm not even gonna bring that up. But um, <laughs> like that, like that Music City race, uh, like was the I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. Like I genuinely like felt like I was in like 355, 356 shape. Granted, I don't know what that feels like because I <laughs> my PR was 404 at the time, um, and you know I I had just missed it and. I, I was just like, for so long, I'd been so in my head about like this perfect, like race, this perfect finish, this perfect close. And like, that's what happened. Like a lot of the time where it's like the second, it wasn't going that way. Like your, my body tenses up, like mm -hmm. I crumbled a bit. Right. So that like, I lost in that last 50 meters of that race. And that was a bit heartbreaking, but it's like, you know, we got to keep going. And I actually raced Ollie later that, that fall oh, in, yeah, yeah. in South Carolina. And, yeah. Man, did I think I was gonna like run three fifty five that day? Well, that like, that was weird because I remember the conditions weren't great. I, I it was and, humid as hell. And yeah, it was humid as heck. And Dathan, we had a pacer come in, and was, the pacer hadn't run for two weeks. Willie, yeah, yeah, Willie hadn't run for two weeks, and Dathan's like, well, because like, Dathan wanted me to run three fifty. Yeah, and um, that was during the time with COVID, mm -hmm. and there wasn't many races, but we wanted opportunities for boys to run fast. Right. So it was a cool idea to get people together and to race and. It was great. Enjoy about yeah. That. yeah, it was great. It just like, wasn't in California, so it's. It just yeah. wasn't California, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was but just the pace of like I think you stepped off a little early. And Went through in fifty four. Yeah, I, I came through fifty six, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, we're in this." Yeah, like, I thought we were good because <laughs> people were getting the momentum, yeah. and then I thought if I just like, I don't know. Sometimes when you have people in a like, even if it's a bit stretched out string, you know where people kind of are, mm -hmm. so you can figure out where that four minute right. barrier is, but. Yeah, the race just wasn't great. Yeah, but it was fun. I mean, I those type of races that, like you said, like you look back on and they're, they're good learning races. For sure, you can kind of feel like where you were and you got to take, well, take, take something away. Out of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dayton asked me after the race. He's like, "How'd it go?" And I was like, "You saw me out there." Like, <laughs> I, mean, I I came through like two fifty six, and yeah. I was like, "This is it. Like, I'm going to like crush it." And then it just hit me like everything cramped up. Like the Wait, second what I was your finish time, four oh five. Yeah, I came through just... I came through 200 to go with it was about 250 when like things I had a really bad problem with like things would just lock up really bad like I just like once the, it once hit the lactic the booty it, lock yeah, yeah I just yeah. could not handle it for some reason I, I I feel like I was in great like 3k shape but we weren't doing like fast fast like lactic clearing type workouts which I feel like as somebody who's not used to that should could have probably used a couple right <laughs> yeah. see like that's that a, like yeah, I mean, like, it would be interesting, like, I was going to say, we should run a 3K there, but the, the community would have been terrible. Yeah, yeah, it would have been, really been even worse right, for that. Yeah. It would have been terrible. It would have been worse. But, yeah, either way, uh, looking at just Joey right now, Joey the athlete, it's like, it's, you're right on the cusp of, like, mm -hmm. all these goals. And, like, regardless, you're, uh, if you take a step back and you look at, like, the three years and you look at the progression, mm -hmm. it's pretty fucking sweet, Yeah, man. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean... 14 13 5k out of college like yeah. 852 steeple 349 1500 408 mile i had, i just like the idea that like and this was something that we always talked about at santa clara it's like we had no business doing what we wanted to do like we we're a bunch of like 930 to 10 flat two milers in high school that wanted to like start mixing it up with some of the best right and obviously that takes time and now we're actually having guys do that and yeah you created like, some waves at santa clara huh like there's some other guys now that are there yeah, that are doing really we well we just had we just had um one of our our best steeplechaser now zach lit off just got eighth at wcc's behind only um the two gonzaga guys and a couple byu guys so yeah. that was huge and he just he made nationals that was our first outdoor nationals qualifier um jack davidson one of my good friends um made cross nationals for the first time in 2020 um 
I think it's just like constant, like just that slow progression and willing to be patient throughout it. And that's, I think my old coach, Felipe Montoro's best quality is he's just willing to be patient with it. He's not trying to force anything. And he just knows that in time it'll come. And, you know, we're ranked, we were ranked as high as eighth in the region this year for cross. And that was just, that's huge. You know? That's pretty like, good in the West. That was, that was, it's awesome. Just yeah. like to have that kind of recognition of like, we're starting to do something like, and we're getting guys that like, you know, we're getting a lot of guys now that are like, used to be like the guys that like every alumni would know because they were the best recruit we ever got. I don't know half those guys on that team anymore that are running better times than I did mm, in cross, right? So yeah. that's awesome to have that like consistency and flow throughout the entire team. But yeah, I just knew that like when I, when I was like coming out to Boulder to run post collegiately, I just knew it was going to take three or four years to get it done. Like I was willing to commit myself to that amount of time because that's what happened in high school and that's what happened in college. I didn't yeah. get good into my fifth year of college, you know, my 5k PR was like 1430 before and I had had well, it's like 925 steeplechaser going into my fifth year. So I just wow. knew it was just a matter of time and it just required a bit of patience and a bit of experience. And it was good to see one result come through pretty well. Right. Like, and, and that kind of, obviously like you can time trial fast times all day. Right. And that's what I feel like my PRs up to this point have been on the track, but to like be out in the roads and like race against guys that are good runners, no matter what shape they're in. And to like not like feel like I'm at my absolute best and to be able to compete was just yeah. that's just reassuring, that's feeling, right? That's yeah. a, that's just a good feeling. And yeah. then I'm sure like at, at some point you guys had all recognized that where it's like now I'm competing at a level that I want to compete yeah. at, and I just hope that momentum keeps going. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. We uh, that's gonna be exciting to see. And then also just on top of that, now you can probably just so so honestly just say to yourself wow i got like the best setup i've ever had like for as sure. a pro at least yeah. you know you can like just be feel so confident in that like whether the running like whether you, anything happens like you can be like all right i, I like i'm on yeah. i'm in a good spot now and like i I'm put myself in exactly yeah, i'm giving it a go like exactly. that's all that that's just about the amount of pressure i need to put on myself to like yeah. race well it's like you know what you're just going for it yeah and just give yourself a break when it doesn't go exactly how you want it to go yeah i wanted to also bring up something which is pretty cool which is your other instagram account oh yeah you want to give it a shout out the burner account <laughs> <laughs> which one the no. uh shoes i would totally wear yeah yeah so um i kind of picked up like a bit of like a, a fascination for shoes specifically running shoes when i was working at boulder running company when i first moved out here and um i think it was like christmas like 2019 i just thought i'd just start drawing shoes in my my notebook that I it was like a handwritten log and I just started drawing shoes and I just thought it was cool like what I could come up with and I was like yeah I, yeah, I would I would wear these right like these <laughs> these seem sweet and it's just kind of turned into a bit more of a passion and now like a, a potential avenue for when I'm done running of like this is something that I like I it's like the reason why I started like the real reason why I moved out here is like I don't know what else to do yeah like I don't want to move to San Francisco and work a nine to five with my thumb up my ass is the joke that I make with my teammates. Um, I didn't want to do that. Like that's what everybody did at Santa Clara. They moved to San Francisco. They just waited for the weekend so they can drink a bunch. Right. And I was like, that's not what I want to do. I love running and I kind of want to keep seeing where I can go with that. And that's kind of where like this is going now with the shoes. Like I just love drawing. It's a good space to be in. I, um, I like, it's like a bit of a creative outlet and the way to express myself. And I just thought I would put that out to the world. Like it's no different than the running where it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable here, even though I'm not very good at what I'm doing currently, or I'm not the best at it. So, and I want like people to be, and like, I haven't like deleted any pictures that I've posted on there um, because I want people to see like, this was like my first drawing when I posted and like, this is where I am now. So like, just to like try and show others that like, Hey, it's okay to put yourself out there and not be very good at it at first and just like be willing to accept that it's part of the journey and that's going to take a little bit of time and work so yeah well it's really cool to see you got some uh you got yeah, some freaking sweet cool yeah cool designs up there we'll yeah. put that in the we'll, we'll, we'll put, put it in the, we'll oh, put it in the link. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome yeah i appreciate that i got i got more stuff coming i uh i just i'm trying to like do a little bit of a project now that's been a, a bit on hold um with the training but i've been trying to do like little like collections you know our team does collections with yeah. gear i want to do like collections with like shoe drawings so this first one that I, I've already posted the first one about is like anime slash like cartoon. So the first one was like a, a shoe for One Punch Man. Um, I if saw you guys that. have seen that show. Yeah, you put that. I saw that. And the next one's going to be like a couple of shoes for Avatar, The Last yeah. Airbender. So nice. Um, yeah, it's just fun. We can, get, we, can get, we can get behind that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a magazine around here somewhere. I'll have to find a few, which is just completely shoes and it's cool design. Exactly what really? you're talking about. That's yeah, awesome. it's some cool stuff. But yeah. it is great to have a creative outlet and also to feel like you're working on something, you know, aside from the running. For sure. Yeah. Just like, hey, like, obviously, like, 
when it comes to applying for jobs, it's tough to say, like, <laughs> yeah, I was just drawing. Like I wasn't actively working or going to school for it. Like I had zero technical experience in it, but it's just like, I have this whole body of work now. I have like, I must have at least like 400 drawings on my iPad of just wow. like, whether it's just Sweet. like quick sketches or very detailed stuff. So yeah, yeah. very cool. Um, we do have some Q and A today. You guys want to open into some Q and A? Let's do it. I have something which is actually, this is a little bit different from normal. I want to show you guys this interesting thing which happened. It was at, I think it was at the Michigan State meet for cross country. And some kid who came second, his name is Garrett Winter. He got DQ'd for crossing the line. And uh, he, I'll show you, I'll put, we'll put the video up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It gets like bleeped out. So you can't even really hear what he says. I think he said the F word. Mm -hmm. He literally got DQ yeah, for it. I heard about that. Well, you heard about this as well? Yeah. I don't, I think I heard about it on Twitter. So he me... said, so he said, fuck. Yeah. Let's make that clear. Yeah. No, he's not even that bad. Here, watch this video. Second and third. Let's go! Yeah. I think he said like, probably like, hell fuck yeah or something. That's awesome. Yeah, I and he that. got DQ'd. Yeah, that's stupid, that in my opinion. That is so stupid. I did that yeah. in high school too. I had like I had a big breakout race, like thirty second PR, and I said, "Holy fuck!" Like yeah. crossing the finish. I line. mean, look at look at Charlie Parker when, yeah. when in New York. She, right. She, everyone like was just all about that when she. Did yeah. she say? Help. She said. She said. Fuck, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Like. That's we like yeah. I mean, I mean he's in high school, but yeah, still, it's, it's like it's the a, sport needs it's emotion. Sport. Like, yeah. yeah, it is. Like, how are you gonna control? He probably didn't control that. He was just so yeah. excited, and he just and the rules. I think the rules said like you can it. It didn't say like that's a DQ. It said you may DQ someone for that, and they decided to do it. Yeah. That's tough. I don't know. I don't know why you would take that bad. away from a kid. Oh, yeah. Just so for sad. like just because you, you could have just given yeah. him a warning and said like, hey, don't. Like try and refrain from doing yeah. that next time at a high school meet. Yeah. Instead of just DQing him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So punishing a kid for caring about. I know. About his achievement. For showing yeah. emotion. Yeah. So we we apologize that that happened to you, Garrett. I don't know if you you probably don't listen to this podcast, but uh we'll give you some credit here. Good job on coming. Get him some second some hand beans merch. Yeah, yeah. Hand beans merch, bro. Yeah. You, you get a hand, if you want to show it. Yeah, we can send you some beans, bro, <laughs> to make up for that. I hope. I don't know if he was a senior or what, but hopefully that doesn't really have like any real impact. Astounding effect on his yeah on him. Uh, the other good question we had, which is a quick one from Andrew, is what is everyone's favorite coffee slash espresso to drink? Do you have a favorite Should I go Joey? first? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not like a, a coffee snob by any means, but I really like the Lavazza coffee that you can like get anywhere. What's that? It's, I, it's like, I think it's like an LA brand coffee. Yeah. It's just like you could, they have like espresso and then a couple other different flavors. It's that Safeway. If you guys ever want to check it out, I was going to bring it back. I forgot. Um, Is he asking what? I think he's asking what type of drink you like to order. Oh, like a cafe. So if you go to a cafe, like do you, like what type of? Drink? Oh, no, yeah, but that's yeah. actually good because like that's interesting because we talk about. Yeah, I mean it's not things. totally clear, but I feel like it's asking what. What drink? I mean, when I, when I go to a coffee shop and I like want to wake up, I'll get like a vanilla latte. That was like when Dude, I first started you drinking basic coffee. Bitch. I know, I <laughs> when I first started drinking coffee, I was working for like a, a garbage truck company the summer at, uh, before my junior year. Yeah. And I was working like 10 hour days and then running 90 miles a week. Jeez. And I started, I was like, I have to start drinking coffee, but I hated Trying to tell us coffee. he was part Mexican. Turns out he's just 100% <laughs> white girl. <laughs> I was 100% just, I was, white girl. I, I literally <laughs> went to Starbucks. I was like, what's the one thing that does not taste like coffee? And they're like, a vanilla a latte and i was like i'll take that <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a nostalgic thing for me now yeah well well go ahead jordy what would you like <laughs> yeah george what's your drink of choice um i feel like out of loyalty to new zealand in australia i order a lot of flat whites the flat white okay we Land haven't gotten, the long flat white we haven't gotten to we haven't done the debate or even like done the research if the flat white was invented in australia or new zealand because I'm, I'm my we always, there's, there's a lot of articles for both. We always thought it was Australia, but then it was just so funny. One time we were at a cafe and Ollie asked them, hey, do you guys do a flat white? Because it wasn't on the menu. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, you mean like the New Zealand flat white? <laughs> and Ollie, <laughs> just, Ollie was nice. so pissed off. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was pissed off. It's funny here because it's disputed. Um, they're saying 1980s in Australia, but they're also saying Wellington in 18, 1989. So... It's currently disputed. It's definitely from down, down under. under. It said the <laughs> earliest documented references to modern beverage date back to Australia in the mid 1980s. Then it picked up in Wellington and was much more popular. Is your favorite a flat white as well, Ollie? I would say so. Um, I do like a Cortado. I, I, I'm enjoying yeah. it a lot more now. Um, but flat white, I just yeah, flat white's just for me uh, an enjoyable 
Yeah, it, it's, it's like nostalgia. Like yeah. you but later in the day, I prefer less and less milk. It's all yeah. it's relative to hour of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, earlier Cortado in the day, the more milk. for me. Yeah. I don't want to have milk in my coffee before I run. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's logical. Why does that make well, sense? Well, if you have gut problems, oh. you don't like dairy. It d dairy doesn't settle well. Or historically has not settled well. <laughs> I ate a bowl of cereal before I raced in high school and I almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of runners would agree with you that mm -hmm. they don't like dairy before yeah. they run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weak ass. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the three of us are like pretty like iron gut type people. Like we, we don't really care, but I mean, I've been around yeah. a lot of runners who have to be really sensitive about Gus what they does have the same thing. Like before he they run. He dumps milk in yeah, his, I'm his almost coffee. like would, that's part of the reason I do have milk before I run because it's got just a bunch of calories. Yeah, That's I mean, it makes, it's good. Get some protein in and yeah. stuff. It's Carbs, good for you. fat, protein. Everything you need. Before I run. Yeah. So, it's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, Cortado is my favorite as well, though. I just like, it's a, it, it just hits right, you it's know? Basically a mini flat white. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like flat white. Cortado. Thanks, uh, a little smaller. Andrew. Yeah, thanks, Andrew, for that question. <laughs> and with that, uh, this has been an absolutely lovely, 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 lovely podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, Joey. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's yeah, been fun. It's been a great time. Um, that's it from us. Uh, have we got anything else to share? Um, no. Well, if you, we'll put yeah. updates on, yeah, we'll on the ground. Stuff. If you want to yeah, follow. follow our Instagram. We're definitely going to post about yeah. the, especially the Movember stuff on that soon. And we are going to have some form of a competition for that. So start we'll growing your mows. And we'll put a picture. link to, uh, to Joey's uh, we'll shoe, put that on the shoe art. And, and then Joey's also, Thank you. don't forget in the comments, best bean pun yep. will win. A hearse, bean ham, content. beans. Any bean-related humor. Shirt. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it for us. Thank you again for watching, everyone. Thanks for being here, Joey. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.